Mm. Before we um, carry on down this product, I just want to backtrack. You mentioned um, you mentioned Second Life there a while ago, and it and it triggered this this memory from a TV show I watch. Um, it's the American version of The Office, and there's a character that's so bogged down by his normal life that he starts to play Second Life. And his habits translate into Second Life to the point where his character starts playing a game called Second Second Life because he's been recreating the habits. Do you think that we are, say the metaverse did reach its full potential? Would be would we be destined to sort of replicate the same problems that drive us away from reality in the first place? It's a very interesting question. Uh, um, because I, I'm not okay. I'm pretty happy, broadly speaking. Okay. This does not mean I'm completely comfortable with free access to pornography. It does not mean I'm completely comfortable with free access to violent video games. But I'm fairly comfortable with the belief that the behaviours that the brain can discriminate between watching and doing. Okay. In that what makes things habitual is often the doing, okay? I, 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 if, I, if I forced people to put cardboard tubes into their mouth and inhale a lot of the time, I'd be much more worried about them taking up smoking than if you merely got them to watch a lot of people smoking on a screen, okay? Right? And they are, they are in some way fundamentally different. And the great guru of this at Goldsmiths, whose name I've briefly forgotten, but she's a wonderful... Uh, uh, speaker on an expert on virtual reality has got research which shows that what you do in um, in virtual reality can carry through into your real life yeah. much more than happens when you consume content in 2D. Okay. Oh. Now, in some respects, that can be very good news in terms of mental health, perhaps. You know, uh, in terms of, for example, people who are frightened of flying. I can see that VR might play a major role in a way that just watching watching film of a plane taking off might not cure your anxiety to the extent of actually experiencing it in virtual reality. Fear of heights, phobias, anxieties. I can see that that may have beneficial effects, but in terms of the behaviours it inculcates online and the thought that those might carry through to real life, I would be more concerned about VR porn, violent porn by a long shot that I would be about 2D porn. And I'm not saying, by the way, that I'm unconcerned by that. I'm merely saying that there may be a fairly significant degree. But there's also, as you said, the fact that the same thing could actually, someone who is neurotically house proud, okay? You know, you could argue there are two possible, you know, there are two possible things. They become really slovenly in Second Life just for a change. My hunch is that people who are house proud also tidy their desktops fairly assiduously yeah. in what is, after all, a virtual, you know, um, skewamorphic env desktop environment. OK, so you're perfectly right that actually you could very well also carry through the very, you know, the very things that are trying to escape. Because the deep down problem is, as, as Alan de Botton always says about holidays, which is that when you imagine a holiday, you imagine yourself escaping yourself yeah. but all the anxieties yeah, not all of them but you know a, a sizable percentage of the anxieties that plague you while you're at home will also plague you when you're staying in a hotel or wandering down a beach 